A second intriguing presentation at this year's ESCO meeting came to us from the Barrows Group in Phoenix. This group has been interested in testing CDK4-6 inhibitors in the recurrent glioma population. In fact, they had previously conducted a trial of the agent ribociclib. And the key finding in that particular trial was the presence of a certain number of responses in recurrent high-grade gliomas, but the lack of durability of response. So while the preliminary results were encouraging in terms of identifying responses, these were short-lived. Consequently, the group decided to exploit a second different approach. And in this approach, they decided to use the combination of the ERK pathway inhibitors together with CDK4, CDK6 inhibitors. Therefore, they conducted a phase zero trial, this time using the drug, drug abimaciclib, which presumably has better blood-brain barrier penetration than the previous agent that they'd used, in combination with the ERK inhibitor, LY3214996. In this particular trial, patients were assigned to different durations. In other words, all patients received the combinatorial drug regimen and then went to surgery after different intervals of time. One group of patients went to surgery within three hours of drug administration, and the second group of patients went to surgery more than five years post-administration of the last dose of drug. There were multiple goals of this phase one study that enrolled a total of 10 patients. The significant findings included the following. There were no major dose-limiting toxicities with this combinatorial approach. They were able to identify pharmacologically relevant doses of both drugs, especially in the non-enhancing component of these recurrent gliomas. At the time of surgery, both the enhancing tumor and as much of the non-enhancing tumor as could safely be removed were obtained. Therefore, they were able to do pharmacologic assessment of drug concentration in the non-enhancing part of the tumor. This is very relevant because measuring drug levels in enhancing tumors does not inform us about the ability of the drug to cross the blood-brain barrier. These pharmacologically relevant levels in the non-enhancing portion of the tumor were commensurate with levels that are associated with inhibition of the retinoblastoma pathway. And in fact, this, are, this represents drug levels that are sufficient for inhibiting tumor proliferation. They found that sampling within three to five hours of the last dosing gave them the best results. This suggests that there is a possibility that a combinatorial approach of CDK4-6 and ERK-1-2 inhibition might yield sufficient drug dosing in both the enhancing and non-enhancing portions of recurrent glioblastoma to potentially diminish proliferation. 25 additional patients are being recruited to this trial to determine if this is in fact the case. This combinatorial strategy is critically important as a separate abstract also presented at ASCO this year, the so-called INSIGHT trial, which had multiple arms on this platform design, included an arm with ebemaciclib in patients with recurrent glioblastoma. And in this particular arm, the progression-free survival was only 6.5 months, and the overall survival was no different than the control arm suggesting that CDK4-6 inhibition alone is unlikely to yield clinically meaningful results, whether it's abimaciclib or ribociclib, and therefore the combinatorial strategy might be worthwhile pursuing. In that context, the results of the additional 25 patients will be significant to give us a hint whether this combinatorial regimen is worth exploring further. <laughs>